Hey Flutter fans, it's Taylor, your friendly engineer. I wanted to bring you another Flutter update, and I thought I would use video this time. Whenever I try to write out the updates, I seem to get writer's block, and it takes me a lot longer to get them out than I'd really like. So, if I do a video update, I figure I'll be able to get the information to you a little faster, and that'll help me also get back to what I really enjoy doing, which is writing software. Um, Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you about is that we have a new place to talk about Flutter on our website. Um, we're using an instance of Discourse, which is a new web platform for communications. It's made by Jeff Atwood, famous for making the great website Stack Overflow, and his blog Coding Horror, among many other great things on the web. So that is at community.flutterwireless.com. And I would really love it if you guys would all sign up and check it out. It's really easy to get started with the conversation, and we want to hear what you want to use Flutter for. I'm really interested to hear what problems you're trying to solve with Flutter, and what kind of things you'd like to be able to connect to Flutter. So please go to community.flutterwireless.com and sign up for that. Um, in other news, I know you guys are all eager to hear what's going on with the wireless certification. In our last update, I was just finishing off the hardware development and finally diving into all the nitty-gritty requirements for certification. Um, my hope was that we would be able to use the radio manufacturer's recommended settings for their chip. Um, they have some default settings that they say will help you pass testing. But what I found over the past month is that if you only need about 200 meters of range, then sure, you can pass the testing with those features or with those settings. Um, but it didn't really seem like it was going to work for us. We weren't able to get much longer range than that. So I've always known that there's a more advanced way of doing things called frequency hopping, and that's what most serious radio hardware does. So it looks like in order to get the performance we need, we're going to need to implement a frequency hopping scheme. I'd been putting it off because it means more software, but it turns out that we can't get certified now with the simpler method and then just release a software update to do frequency hopping in the future, we'd have to get fully recertified, which is very expensive. So in the past two weeks, I've been writing the low-level system code needed for Flutter in order to do the frequency hopping. It's coming along pretty well now, and it looks like we're going to be just fine with that. So I spent some time on the phone the other day with the testing engineer from the certification house, and he walked me through everything that's needed in order to actually have Flutter pass the tests. We have to basically program it to hop through its full range of frequencies. They're going to measure it for several hours at, at, um, in that configuration. There's a few other things we need to do. But it seems like it's now finally within our grasp. I really understand what we need to do at the testing house. And I don't think it'll be too much work to get that stuff up and running on the board for the testing. Um, so in the last update, I also thought that we might need to do a hardware filter on the board. I was concerned that the open source nature and some of the requirements that um, that both the EU and the US have about um, about bad behavior of the hardware would require us to actually lock out some of the some of the frequency behavior of the boards with a hardware filter in order to stop mischief. Um, but it seems I've come up with a scheme that uh, that should meet those requirements that won't uh, limit the functionality for you guys in any way um, as far as performance is concerned, but um, we'll make it so that people can't accidentally cause the boards to, to go do some, some bad behavior. So the good news is we won't need that hardware filter, and that means that we'll have identical hardware for the U.S. and Europe. That's just a better deal for us. It's simpler to keep track of. It's a little bit cheaper. That hardware filter was like 60 cents, and we don't want to have to add it if we don't have to. Um, and it just means better flexibility all around. Um, it also seems like Europe is beginning to allow operation in the 920 to 928 range. I'm still looking at that, and I'm not sure how finalized that is. But that would be great. It would mean an expanded frequency range um, that we could tap into uh, if, if those laws uh, continue moving forward and things look good. Um, so generally good news for all that. Since we're not adding the hardware filter, now the boards are done, and um, I can go ahead and order a handful of them as is so that um, I can put them together and get them ready for the testing house. So 
The testing house near here in Fremont, unfortunately, is very booked. I think there's a lot of people in Silicon Valley making wireless devices. But they have another office down in L.A., and they said that their schedule's pretty wide open. So the plan at this point is I'm going to order circuit boards um, as soon as possible, so uh, either this week or early next week. Um, it'll just take eight to ten days to show up. I'll put a few together, run them through their paces, and make sure that the few tweaks I've made in the last couple of months um, – are are all working well, and if that goes well, then we'll be bringing it to the testing house. So that's the status of that. I'm really excited about that. It's a bit unnerving because it's ten thousand dollars, and if we do it wrong, then we're going to have to do it again. So I very much hope um, that 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 will work out, and we're definitely going to be very cautious about making sure that we're totally ready before we actually do that. But as soon as we have more information on that, we'll let you know. Um, in other news, we have a new fun demo for Flutter. I went to the Y Combinator hackathon a couple of weeks back and met with some other people, and we built built something fun with Flutter. Um, I made this little sensor board here. Um, you can see a lithium battery, um, Flutter. Uh, it's a little, it's just blinking it's status. Um, but on the back here, you can see some wiring. This is the little. Um, this is the basic Flutter breakout shield that I have. It's got just basically a row for a socket and then rows for soldering, whatever you want, um, on the sides. And it's a really great way of, um, of hooking up Flutter to things because, you know, you'll have a limited number of these, but these are really cheap, so you can have a handful. And then when you want to start up one of your Flutter projects, you just plug it in and it turns on. So what I've done with this is I've wired up um, a, a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, uh, as well as this soil conductivity sensor. Uh, this basically measures, uh, so this is a, a plant monitoring, um, little sensor for monitoring plants growing in the ground. Um, so this measures the moisture levels of the soil, and then this measures the moisture in the air and the temperature. The uh, humidity in the air and the temperature affect the rate of transpiration of the plant. That's how much water the plant exchanges with the atmosphere. And then obviously the soil moisture affects how much water the plant can take in via the soil. So this is an example of how someone who wanted to monitor their garden or a farm um, could use wireless sensor networks to improve how much information they have. So at the hackathon, uh, my friends and I made a little, um, well, my friends, I, I did this part, and a friend of mine made a web app that would basically take this data, it, it was sent to a database on the web, which was then displayed on a Google Maps overlay. Um, we used a fake Google, loca uh, Google Maps location to display it, but anyway, that was pretty fun. So uh, I'll have full information on this on the web once um, the more important things are done. For now, it's all focusing on certification. Um, but the good news is, basically, that um, uh, as I finally finally really narrowed down what the details are of the certification, I feel like that is our absolute next step. That is where we're headed. Um, and as soon as we get that done, we will definitely let you know. So um, thanks so much for watching. Again, please, totally would love it if you would check out community.flutterwireless.com. I want everyone who cares to be on there talking. I want to hear what you guys want out of Flutter. I know you want it in your hands more than anything else, and I totally get that. I want it in my hands as well and more than just a few prototype boards, so I'm really excited to get this stuff moving forward. Um, but until that time, come and tell us what problems you're trying to solve with Flutter, and let me know what sensors you want to see hooked up to Flutter. And any other questions you have, they're all at community.flutterwireless.com. Uh, thank you so much. Bye.